Hello, and welcome to Suicide Prevention Training for All School Staff, otherwise known as Gatekeeper Training. I'm Brenda Jennings with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. This training is meant for all staff, for um, cooks, bus drivers, teachers, administrators, and anyone employed by the school district. Um, what you should find on the website for this training is a copy of the PowerPoint, um, also a video on the website as an introduction to the gatekeeper training. The video contains statistics from 2011 YRBS, or Youth Risk Behavior Survey, and also one from Department of Health Services. But it includes all information from Wisconsin. This is a nice way to introduce the gatekeeper training, so I recommend you use the video as also um, part of this webinar and PowerPoint. Some goals for this workshop include um, participants will know the reasons for school staff to prevent suicide, they will know the warning signs, and they will know how to help students who show warning signs. We understand that this is a tough topic and we want to make sure that you take care of yourselves. If you find that you're responding to this information in a particular manner, um, we encourage you to talk to somebody about it. We have some language that we like to use um, when talking about suicide, um, and this is taken from survivors of suicide or family members whose loved ones have died by suicide. They recommend a particular language to use when talking about this topic. They recommend completed suicide, died by suicide, took his or her own life, or died of suicide. Those are all factual um, and appropriate language that we can use um, when talking about suicide. Some language that we want to avoid includes successful suicide attempt, um, because there's nothing successful about a suicide. Something else we want to avoid is committed suicide. Um, we hear this a lot. Um, a term that's commonly used, um, but we want to stay away from committed suicide because it's not considered illegal. So the reasons for school staff to prevent suicide um, include one in five high school students report signs of depression. Um, you'll also find this statistic in the video um, as the introduction to this gatekeeper training. Um, that's one in five high school students. So in a classroom of 25 students, um, about five students would report signs of depression. Also, suicide is the second leading cause of death for Wisconsin youth. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, coming up. Also, one suicide is too many, um, and it's a life lost forever. So we have a number of reasons that we want to prevent suicide um, in Wisconsin. Also, suicide affects the entire school, the entire school community, um, and it does interrupt learning, um, and it, inf it affects the entire community as well. Um, suicide is a long-term solution to a short-term problem, and we want to help students problem solve so that they don't turn to suicide um, as a solution to a problem. Also, most suicides can be prevented, and that's what we're hoping to do today, is prevent further suicides. Some leading causes of death for Wisconsin youth from the, the years of 2000 to 2010, um, for the age range of five to 19, the leading cause of death are unintentional and accidents. Um, the second leading cause of death is suicide. Um, others would include cancer, homicide, um, drownings, diseases, etc. There are many others um, below that. But suicide is the second leading cause of death um, for youth age 5 to 19. When we take a look at the 515 um, youth who have died by suicide in that 
in, that, in those years. We can break it down by age as well as by year. And we see some changes over the years from 2000 to 2010. The number has gone down from 61 to 48. Um, the last couple of years, we have seen a, a little bit of an incline. Um, then we can also look at the age range of 15 to 17. We've seen that number rise a little bit. Um, this is important to look at so that we can direct our, our suicide prevention efforts um, to a particular area. But it's important to note that um, all age ranges um, can be a part of this, and we should try to prevent suicides at all, at all levels. If we look at the suicide rate per 100,000 youth, age um, 0 to 19, and we compare Wisconsin to the United States, um, we see that the United States is the yellow bar, um, Wisconsin is the red bar, and Wisconsin has only dipped below the national average um, three times since 1985. When we look at these su suicides and these youth, the 515 who have died over those 11-year um, span, about 418 were males, 97 were females, so that's greater than a 4 to 1 ratio. Firearms consist about half of the deaths at 238. Um, suffocation and hanging also resulted in the 213 deaths. And then other methods would include poisoning, falls, drowns, vehicles, etc. This is important to look at um, so that we know how to prevent these deaths. When looking at bullying, um, we see a lot um, in the media about bullying. Um, we need to pay particular attention to the bully, the victim, and the person who is a bully and a victim, um, those people are significantly higher. They have higher rates of depression, suicidal ideation, and suicidal behaviors um, than those students who do not report any experiences of bullying. Um, also, students who do not feel accepted at home or at school, um, for example, the LGBT youth, or lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender youth um, are also at high risk um, because of the lack of acceptance. We want to look at the warning signs when we're trying to prevent suicide. Um, some of the signs that we want to look for are withdrawing from friends, family, and others. For example, if someone's always involved in sports, clubs, um, groups, um, and then suddenly is not interested in participating in those clubs or groups. Also, if someone talks about hurting themselves, um, this is a warning sign. If they feel lasting sadness or just feel um, depressed a lot. Um, also, having a hard time concentrating um, or focusing and then just feeling anxious, hard to um, sit still, um, could be a warning sign. Um, also, looking at school performance or school grades or schoolwork, if we see a decline in their school performance, this could be a warning sign. Also, increased alcohol and drug use um, is a warning sign um, for suicide. When we look at depression and mental health, um, also AODA use, um, it's important to point out a statistic that 90% of people that die by suicide had either a mental health um, issue or an AODA um, alcohol or other drug use issue, or both. Um, so those are um, high numbers for um, suicide. Um, that's something to pay particular attention to with um, suicide. Some more warning signs include change in eating habits. Um, this could be eating more or eating less. 
Also a change in sleep patterns, um, sleeping more or sleeping less. Um, also, this is a great way to start a conversation um, with somebody that maybe you're kind of wondering about. It's just talking about their sleep patterns. Uh, how much sleep are you getting? Also a loss of interest in favorite activities. Um, it kind of relates back to the withdrawal, the withdrawal of, of normal activities or favorite activities that they would have. Also frequent complaints about physical symptoms, body aches. Um, if this person's in the nurse's office a lot, complaining about stomach aches, headaches, um, fatigue, they may have some warning signs that we need to pay p particular attention to. Some more warning signs include uncontrolled anger or seeking revenge, also acting reckless or risky behavior. For instance, driving faster than usual, getting in trouble, um, getting in trouble with the law and not really paying particular attention to or having any care about what happens um, as a consequence. Also feeling trapped, like there's no way out. Um, and again, relating back to the problem solving, if they're not able to problem solve and they only think of um, one solution and being suicide as that solution, um, it's important to, um, that they work on some problem solving um, skills. Also, feeling hopeless could be a warning sign. Um, not seeing any hope in the future is definitely a, a key warning sign to suicide. And then no sense of purpose in life. Other warning signs include being intolerant of praise or rewards, um, not able to take a compliment, um, and not, not believing um, that they would be good enough. Um, also suddenly cheerful after a period of depression. And this is a, a warning sign because um, when someone's been depressed or sad for a period of time, and then suddenly there's um, a cheerfulness, a, a spike in their um, behavior. Um, this can be a warning sign because maybe they've made a decision about suicide. Also, giving away favorite possessions, um, things they love. For example, um, CDs, music, um, games, clothes, computers, um, etc. And then making a last will and testament or just preparing um, after they've um, passed on what's going to happen to their things. Some urgent warning signs um, which help would be needed and immediately um, and help would be needed right now would include talks about hurting themselves um, looking for ways to kill themselves or looking for firearms or um, those lethal means. And then talking or writing about death, dying, or suicide. These are all um, warning signs that need to be taken seriously and we need to get them help immediately. When you see urgent warning signs, it's important to not shame, um, saying that you're too sensitive or um, grow up, you'll get over it. Also, it's important not to delay. Um, get them help right away. Don't wait until um, Monday. Make sure that you get them help immediately. Don't blame. Um, for instance, saying if you wanted a better grade, um, you should have worked harder. Um, try to reserve any judgments. Also, don't give up. Suicide is not a destiny. Um, and don't do it alone. If you're not sure, um, consult with a principal or a student services member um, or a crisis team member. And then don't leave the student alone. If you're concerned about a student, make sure that someone is with them um, or take them to see somebody, um, whether it's a counselor or social worker. So we want to talk to them um, using an acronym ACT. And this stands for Acknowledge, Care, and Tell. 
So the A stands for acknowledge. We want to acknowledge the signs and symptoms, and we don't want to minimize their feelings and what they're going through. C is for care and concern for the person who's at risk. And T is for tell. We want to tell a trusted adult or um, someone on the student services or a crisis team who knows how to respond um, to this situation. So let's walk through ACT. Acknowledge, um, just stating that you understand that they feel bad. Um, some other examples include, that sounds really tough. I'm sorry to hear that you're going through this. Or, or you could say you have some major challenges on your plate. But we don't want to minimize those feelings um, by saying you'll just get over it, um, you're young, um, or time heals. Um, we just want to acknowledge that they're going through a, a rough patch. We also want to say that we care. And this is important to state um, that you care about them. I would hate for any harm to come to you or I don't want this to get any worse. Um, I'd really like to see you get some help. Then tell someone. The T stands for tell. Um, it's important to bring someone, that person to someone who is trained to help. Um, I know Ms. Jennings in the student services office or the counseling office, and she works with many students who are facing challenges like these. Also, know the people at your school who are trained, um, whether they're student services staff, um, crisis team members, and the best way is to take them um, to that person yourself. Um, if you can't do that, the second best way is to tell someone on that team, that student services team or crisis team, um, that you have concerns about a student and making sure that you're not leaving them alone. So the question comes up, can I get into trouble if I do this wrong? And the answer is no. The state law protects you if you are trying to help prevent suicide. Um, so just take um, security in knowing that, that you are safe and trying to help students and trying to help anyone who might be um, suicidal. Means restriction. We want to talk about lethal means restriction because it does play a major role in suicide prevention. Um, we want to promote safe storage. Um, we're not saying to take all of the firearms or all of the guns away. Um, what we want to do is promote safe storage of the firearms. Four strategies include trigger locks, cabinets, storing the guns unloaded, and locking the ammunition separately um, in a separate location and keeping them locked. Um, some other things we want to pay attention to might be alcohol, drugs, um, or other lethal means. Remember, you can help in suicide prevention. Anyone can help. We want to look for the warning signs of suicide. We want to act or use the acronym ACT. We want to acknowledge that someone is going through a bad time. We want to say that we care about them and we want to bring them or tell someone who is trained to help in this situation. Some resources in case you're interested are the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. This is a national hotline that is answered locally um, usually within the state of Wisconsin. And people calling this line can get resources um, on where to go for help for suicide. They also have a website. Um, also, Prevent Suicide Wisconsin is a great website for um, anyone to look at resources on prevention. Um, this is a local and state partnership with suicide prevention. Also, Department of Public Instruction, our website on suicide prevention has a number of resources and materials. I encourage you, if you're working in 
suicide prevention to check out the website um, and look at all of the resources and materials that are available. Our DPI contacts. We have a number of people working on suicide prevention. Uh, we have Nick Dibble, who is our school social work consultant. You can reach him at his number and email. Also, John Hiskin is our health education consultant, and he was in charge of putting together the curriculum on suicide prevention. So if you have questions, um, you can also refer to them. And again, my name is Brenda Jennings. My contact information is listed there. Also, Katherine Bush is our school psychology consultant um, that can also answer questions on suicide prevention. This is our gatekeeper training or suicide prevention training for all school staff. If you have further questions, feel free to reach us um, by giving us a phone call or sending us an email. Thank you so much for participating in this webcast.